Hearing help goes over the counter. That's our text to nation. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us from New Hira is CEO John Luna. Hi, John. Hi, Fred. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Now, New Hira is the first company to receive FDA clearance in the new over-the-counter hearing aid category. And you've really been a pioneer in this space for, for a while. So tell us a, a bit about the background first and the significance of what the FDA is doing here. Sure. Uh, thanks. Uh, New Hira was founded on accessibility and affordability to drive hearing solutions to consumers globally uh, and so that they would have a product they could purchase over the counter initially with unregulated products. Um, and then we received our 510K clearance uh, as the first uh, OTC he self-fitting hearing aid uh, from the FDA in October, soon after the enactment of the new rule, which allowed consumers to purchase uh, OTC hearing aids for perceived mild to moderate hearing loss uh, for the first time over the counter without seeing a professional. And that initially was signed uh, in 2015 uh, by President Trump, and then uh, uh, over the last five years went through reviews and finally became law in October of uh, 2022. Took some time. So tell me what your thoughts are about the need for over-the-counter hearing aids. What do we know? Well, I've been in the industry for 30 years uh, on all aspects uh, of distribution, manufacturing, uh, as well as retail. Um, I can tell you that you know most consumers wait about seven years from their realization they were having some difficulty with hearing loss to, um, to actually doing something about it um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, typically, it's access. Uh, they don't have access uh, to the previous uh, professional channel, uh, or they didn't have health insurance, or, or, or secondly, it was affordability as part of that. If they had access, they, they then couldn't afford hearing aids, and hearing aids typically out of pocket were about $4,600 a pair. Uh, with very little insurance coverage. And so consumers um, had the need, but you know, in some aspects couldn't afford it or didn't have access. There's over uh, 48 million Americans with hearing loss that could benefit from the use of hearing aids. Um, globally, it's 1.5 billion people that have hearing loss that could benefit from the use of hearing aids. In the US, of that 48 million, only about 10 million people have actually done something uh, to help their hearing loss uh, and actually purchased hearing aids or purchased a product that could uh, support their needs in their lifestyles. Uh, 38 million Americans still have mild to moderate hearing loss untreated. Uh, and as a recent uh, you know, uh, publication just came out this week, uh, there's a link between untreated hearing loss and early onset dementia. And more will come about that. But there's a lot of comorbidities that go along with hearing loss. So treating your hearing loss uh, not only allow you a, a better quality of life and, and communication and listening, but also uh, can have some other health benefits as well. So how does this work from the consumer perspective? Step us through. The, the consumer will have the ability, 18 and over adults, to purchase in any retail and online hearing aids that are deemed uh, over-the-counter hearing aids that are for mild to moderate perceived hearing loss. And so the FDA went through a rule change uh, and then reclassified hearing aids for over-the-counter use. And there's some labeling guidelines to protect consumers. Uh, and the FDA's goal was to have it uh, reasonably safe and effective so that consumers would feel confident that the products that they're purchasing um, will meet their needs and actually perform as prescriptive hearing aids would have. Um, we have a 510K clearance um, as substantially equivalent to a clinically fit hearing aid. And that's because we use um, a, a industry standard NAL NL2 algorithm, which is basically a, a hearing prescription for hearing loss for mild to moderate. And we test the person's hearing through the device itself. So we actually do a frequency test at each frequency in both ears through the software in our our app for iOS and Android. And it allows the consumer to self-fit the, the um, HP Hearing Pro hearing aids within 15 minutes out of the box. Tell me about the HP Hearing Pro branding. Uh, this, is, this is a partnership because people have become familiar with, with the new Hero brand as well. Yeah, I know here has a legacy of success in the consumer channel for over the last seven years. Um, you know, we were uh, contacted by HP. HP has not had a medical device in uh, since the 1990s, uh, and they wanted to compete with other legacy U.S. brands um, and global brands in the OTC hearing aid space with a product uh, with uh, their brand label on it. So we did a brand licensing agreement with HP. Uh, we brought the product out as the HP Hearing Pro as soon as we received FDA clearance. 
And, you know, the goal, you know, part of this changeover and, and one of the reasons it's important to, to partner with HP is because this is an unassisted sale, right? Typically in the past, consumers would have to uh, go to their physician or an audiologist or a licensed hearing aid professional within their state and actually uh, have access to having their hearing tested and purchase hearing aids in a prescriptive format. Um, now, over the counter, it's an unassisted sale, right? There's nobody involved. There's no professional. Consumers are encouraged to do their research ahead of time, encouraged to uh, read the, and the FDA requires all of us uh, to have you know, certain warning labels and, um, you know, conditions for sale on the back of the, the product packaging. But at the same time, when you're at a retail counter and you've got five or 10 choices, what we wanted is that consumer, the U.S. consumer brand recognition, and we wanted that consumer confidence in purchasing a product and that they're familiar with. And so HP, I can tell you, um, has brand guidelines, brand standards, and quality standards and regulatory standards that are, are, are top notch. I mean, they're some of the best. And so we, they wanted to make sure that we're in compliance. We want, we stay in compliance with not only the FDA and other regulations, but also then, um, you know, HP's brand because uh, we're representing that in the market. So for us, it's it's uh, an important uh, brand recognition. They're the 36th most recognized brand in America, uh, and they're one of the high high level tech brands. And, and in retail, they're also in other parts of the store, right? If it's in a consumer electronics retailer like Best Buy, you know they're in laptops, they're in accessories, there's some keyboards, monitors, printers. Everybody has had some experience with HP in, in their life. Uh, personally and at work. So I think for us, it's a, it's a great brand partnership. And ideally for them, it's it's a successful uh, first entry back into medical devices and, and regulated space. And I suppose this is going to become a fairly crowded space. It's crowded. It always has been crowded. Um, you know, I think that, you know, we, we've seen competitors from the incumbents, like the big five hearing aid manufacturers, come into the space uh, in different ways. We have uh, competitors that used to be direct to consumer only that are now entering the OTC space. Um, the beauty for Nuhira is that, you know, we've been in retail uh, for the last five years. We've been DTC for the last seven years, specifically for uh, hearing related issues and now with a, a medical device and a hearing aid. So we understand the consumer. Uh, we've got a good team of engineers and science behind us, and we've got two clinical validated studies for our software within the medical device that uh, we know will meet the consumer's needs and provide a great solution. And this earbud uh, form factor, which is going to be popular here, um, really helps to eliminate much of the stigma that some people had. Um, we, we find that it does. You know, it's the leading form factor of new products coming to market. So I think we're seeing, I guess, um, you know, uh, imitation is flattery. Uh, and it shows that our our form factor has been successful. And, um, you know, since 2017, we've stayed within the earbud form factor. Um, you know, we know that about 65% of uh, th this category currently being sold in the market in retail and online is an earbud form factor. So, you know, hearing aids typically over the last, you know, 10, 15, 20 years have been over the, over the ear. Um, they've gone through uh, different iterations, but, you know, the over the ear style has what people think of as traditional hearing aids. And we saw during COVID that with mask wearing, people losing their hearing aids, uh, you know, fumbling with glasses and a masks uh, at, at uh, certain demographics, uh, this became a, a very popular solution for folks during the pandemic, working from home and also in globally. Uh, and we saw a, a peak in, in business uh, with online sales. And now it's going back to traditional retail. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're still then on that shelf with all the different form factors and people will decide what they want. something that looks very traditional or if they want to be, you know, uh, in a different form factor with an earbud. And what we're finding is the average consumer that purchases hearing aids is a, historically is 72 years old. Our average consumer is 52 years old. Still, you know, uh, in many cases, a working adult who, uh, you know, has different aspects of their work and home and, and other parts of their lifestyle where they need situational hearing, where they need benefit, where they need to be. I'm wearing them now where you can do calls like this, video calls or audio calls through the telephone, listening to music, streaming uh, movies or television. Television. So we, we find that the form factor um, is easy. It, it doesn't look like a hearing aid. People don't feel like they're wearing a hearing aid, even though they're having the hearing benefit, in addition to the other benefits of Bluetooth and active noise cancellation. Terrific. Tell me about pricing and availability. Available uh, starting next month. We're doing pre-orders now on our website at bestbuy.com and in Best Buy stores. 
Um, and then we also uh, have bought it at, a, at a, a market price point that is competitive, we believe, at $699 a pair. So, you know, for $699 a pair, you can have a, a pair of HP uh, Pro self-fitting OTC hearing aids, and you can purchase them in retail or online. Terrific. For more info, the site is hphearingpro.com. Got that right? <laughs> you got it. John Luna, thanks for spending time with us. Thank you.